What do you think will come of that? Oh, no. I don't like the look of it. All right. So what do we snack? Do you want to show the snackies? Oh, yes. I will show our snackies. We've got a chocolate hazelnut macaron. We got chocolate covered potato chips, which the description in English is chocolate cookie. Japanese cookie, rather. Yay! And then we have the same thing, but in strawberry. Strawberry Japanese cookie. That is actually potato chip. And then I found these, which I'm really excited for. I like the austerity of this box. Very I do. It's very beautiful. Very plain, simple box. Very beautiful box. A lot better than the weird uh, Hokkaido things you got me. Not a fan of those. You tried them? Yeah. No, no, no bueno. Okay, I'll pass them on to somebody else, or you can throw them away. Oh, I did that already. Oh, perfect. They were, they were, no, not into it. So these are milk chocolate with cacao nibs from Hokkaido. Cacao. Yeah, cacao. Boosh and or cacao nibs. Right, exactly. So those are our snackies. Uh, we are reading Chocoholic. Yep. Chocoholic. And... Should we eat some chocolate before we read Chocoholic, or... Eat... Hmm. How, shall we, how shall we proceed on this? It is up to you. What, vote in the chat. No. <laughs> vote in the chat. Uh, let's, let's take... Let's, let's, let's do these guys. Alright, let's, let's try our uh, chocolate-covered chippos. Once you pop... That is... How's that looking? Looking like chocolate... Covered potato chips. Ridges. Alright, well, bon appetit. Mm. Mm. They're very fluffy. Huh. Mm. You alright there? Hmm. Hmm. How do you feel? That is not my thing. Doggos. It tastes exactly what you would expect. Yeah. Like, I'm not... I'm not opposed to it. I have work. <laughs> hmm. Huh. Yeah. Alright. It's like... It's not like a potato chip on the inside, though. This is really more what I was expecting. It's like a soft, fluffy... Potato in the shape of a ridged chip. Yeah, that was bizarre. I don't know how to feel about that. I'm not opposed to it. Well, I think I've had my one and I enjoyed that and I'm done. Alright. <laughs> Alright, so this is Chocoholic. That's a dog. Yeah, those are my dogs. You know, I'm going to shut my door so that the dog sounds will be muffled. Le less dog for your enjoyment. Now with 50% less dog. <laughs> well, it's 300% more than your I am never food. coming back to this Applebee's. <laughs> Chili bees! Chili bees! Chili bees! I spent almost four months looking for Otto. Uh, that's Otto, O-T-T-O, as in the, a person's name. Not like Auto Parts, no. which was my first assumption. Uh, get in the zone. Auto zone. Spend four months trying to find one of our stories. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, he went missing shortly after the old chocolate factory began operating again. Allegedly, that's what's in the chips. Oh, it's Otto's Otto. in the chips. Otto's in the chips. That's why they taste funky. He Funky fresh. Allegedly, according to the reports, at least, there was an incident during a tour on the factory he... Of the factory he went on. Of the factory he went on. There we go. He fell into a stream of highly viscous chocolate and was taken down to a separate part of the factory by the undertow. He, uh, that caught in the undertow, just caught in the undertow. <laughs> that was when my first bit uh, of suspicion arose. It's a common misconception that a rip current can drag someone under water and down a stream. It doesn't work that way. So is this, like, a Charlie and the Chocolate creepypasta? I don't Char know. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory? I don't know. Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory? That'd be interesting. That would be. 
auto was retrieved by some factory workers in a separate room from where the incident occurred. Besides being covered in liquid gold, he appeared to be in perfect health. His mother verified this, as did the medical center she took him to immediately after. Aside from being shaken up, Otto reportedly continued on with life as normal, even eating chocolate on a daily basis, as he did prior to the tour. So Otto likes chocolate. Is Otto Augustus Goop? Maybe. It, it feels like it's Augustus Goop. It does. Um, so... It's not really clear who our person, who, who our narrator is in this whole scenario. He's like a friend of Otto's. That's pretty much all we got, right? Yeah, I guess. My investigation wasn't into the incident, however. His mother squared that away with the CEO of the company not long after it happened. My involvement in the situation came after Otto went missing a month later. Okay. His mother phoned the police first, who didn't take her claim seriously. Her reasoning that something was wrong was based on the lack of chocolate bar wrappers in his bed. I'll admit, when she came pounding on my office door yelling, Help! There's no wrappers! My boy! My boy! My bread boy! (laughs) My stick man! (laughs) I also had a hard time taking her seriously. Money is money, though, so I let her into my office. We are a private investigator. My my question has been answered. There you go. P.I. He's a private dick. He... That's a P.D. Oh. Pump, pump. Public. <laughs> this man's been arrested for uh, PDA, public dis- no PDD, public display of dick. Uh, after an inter- eternity of sobbing and giving unopened chocolate bars to me to examine, she was finally able to tell me all of the details of the incident and his behavior since the occurrence, leading up to his disappearance. Huh. According to Otto's mother, he began acting strange about a week after returning home from the tour of the factory. His chocolate intake almost tripled, and Otto needed chocolate bars every hour of the day. He would wake up in the middle of the night, sweating and screaming that he needed a chocolate bar immediately. Why she didn't see this? Ma! I need more chocolate! (laughs) Why she didn't see this as strange, I never fully understood. You know, like, I feel like... I don't know, maybe take him to the hospital and at least get him checked for diabetes. <laughs> Just get him checked into a uh, rehabilitation center. <laughs> right. For chocolate addiction. Yeah. He started skipping school roughly one week before he disappeared, but was always found behind the local candy shop scavenging through the waste bins looking for discarded chocolate bits. He was he was always found behind the middle school dumpster. Oh my god. Slipping and sliding. Slipping and sliding everywhere. Again, I'll never understand why she didn't take him to a doctor. You and me both, pal. Part of me feels that she would let him eat so she didn't have to deal with his tantrums. Uh, Opinions don't solve investigations, however. Okay. Alright. I took the job mostly out of curiosity, although I won't deny that the hefty reward she was offering for an easy case swayed me a tad. Um... I don't know why we're saying this again. It's like, I get the point. You, you've you've already told us that you're in this for the money. Right. Um, and then also the aspect of, like, this being an easy case. Like, is it an easy case? Is, is finding a disappeared child an easy case? Right. While she might have been unable to accept it, at the time it was obvious to me that Otto had been attempting to return to the factory. The job was only a matter of finding him along the way. It didn't sound difficult. They lived one uh, country over and shared a land border with the city the factory was in. For a child of nine, the task wasn't exactly an impossibility. It was a day trip by train, two or three by car, and probably not much more by hitchhiking. Hmm. Mm. I I don't know. I think that that would be pretty difficult. I guess it depends on the time period. Yeah, I suppose so. Because, like, hitchhiking in America was easier in, like, the 60s and 70s. Where you can get your kicks. Right. On Route 66. I mean, like, I don't... This is clearly Britain, though. I think, maybe. Uh, the Euros. Or is well, that the it, Euro sign, or is that the pound sign? That's the Euro sign, okay. so... So you got one Euro and... One eight hundredths of a euro. Is that how euros are counted? <laughs> yes. 
I guess. Uh, 1,800 euros up front, 2,200 upon retrieval. And all I had to do was track his scent like a hound. I should correct myself here before I get too far. I did not spend almost four months looking for Otto. I found him within two weeks' time. The remainder of that period was spent attempting to infiltrate the factory to find him and rescue him. He was turned into an Oompa Loompa. That's where the Oompa Loompas come Uh. from. Uh, Okay, so bearing all of that in mind, I like that he, like, escaped back into the factory. It's just, I can't help but feel... I can't help but, like, put myself into this whimsical area that I don't think the story is intending. Right. Because it's a chocolate factory. Right. Like, I've been to an actual chocolate factory, and I keep trying to put myself into an actual chocolate factory, but it keeps becoming, like, this mystical wonderment land. Right. For me. Mm. And so maybe if the story does something here to, like, ground it to be like, no, this is just, like, a regular old real-life chocolate factory, then I would... Anyway. According to my sources, Otto made it into the factory approximately six days after he left home. They never attempted to contact his mother. Until a few days ago, I was unable to confirm visuals. It was all conjecture. The factory is highly guarded. It's probably closer to a castle than an actual factory. This is making me think that it's more and more of the chocolate factory. Right. Uh, there's a... Uh, the the wonderful chocolate factory. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a gargantuan wrought iron gate that is surrounded... That surrounds the entire premises. Easily taller than two men. Brown German shepherds that freely roam the grounds. Uh, Not chocolate labs? I would have chocolate labs guard a chocolate factory is all I'm saying. No comment. (laughs) Um, I'm just imagining like these free range German shepherds. What do you just? But this is making it more and more like the chocolate, the <laughs> Willy Wonka's chocolate factory. Guards that cover every one hundred feet, standing stoic as if they were members of the Queen's Guard. It took me the brunt of the past few day, uh, past few months, uh, surveying the grounds every day to formulate a plan of action. The place is a goddamn fortress. One might think it's. The vacation home to royalty. It's like Fort Knox for chocolate. Chocolate Fort Knox. Getting inside wasn't the most honorable of tasks, but it needed to be done. The guards never changed shifts. The dar- the dogs, the dogs never went indoors. I, <coughs> I hate to admit this, but I have to. I went through the septic tank. It was left unguarded, underground, with about half of it exposed mm, to the soup. Give me the chocolate. It's a type of chocolate. Yes, it was disgusting. I don't think the smell will ever cease to haunt me. There were no other options. I crawled through those pipes, almost getting stuck a few times along the way. Luckily, no flushes happened. I came through a large manhole in the floor under what appeared to be a series of tubes that chocolate was thro- flowing through. The area was small, but just big enough for me to crawl through on my hands and knees. Had I been a little person, there's a chance that I could have walked, I guess. If I was an Oompa Loompa. If I was an Oompa Loompa. Doopity doo. When I was an Oompa Loompa, (laughs) I crawled under the tubes for quite some time until they rose up into a ledge leading down to a cold stone hallway appeared. Uh, I checked for the guards. Nothing. It was deserted, and I was in luck. After a minute of walking down that hallway, I came to a heavy, beaten door that read, uh, authorized personnel. Parts of it are, like, scribbled out. Um, wonkies only? It's W space N uh, K I space space E S. Wonkies? Winkies? 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 Like Twinkies, but for people whose names start with W? Jackpot, at least I hoped it was. So it's. it's They don't explain how it's crossed out. Mm mm. Maybe like chocolate smeared over the wall? If it's chocolate. And he's like, I, normally I would just like lick it off, but 
Not after what I've been through. Right, not after what I've seen. I jimmied the lock hand I jimmied the lock in the handle and slowly cracked open the door. The sm- a smell overtook me. Worse than any worse than the filthy wastewater covering my body. It was flesh. Rotting flesh and chocolate. Not the pleasant chocolate smell I was used to. This was spoiled milk with cacao mixed into it. My entire body began began convulsing as I gagged. I didn't want to go in. I pondered it as I heaved. Was the 4,000 pound, euro pounds... Why can't it just be American? Didgeridoos. Yeah. Four four hundred four thousand dollar reduce <laughs> worth whatever I was going to witness. Yes, yes, it was. Uh, hey, he's got rent to pay. Like, <laughs> yeah, he's 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 going to have a heavy water bill after this. Right after the shower he takes. Oh man, that uh, might take up at least half of that money. Uh, I opened the door wide, and it's Europe, and they don't shower, so money co- that's because money co- money costs so much, water costs so much. Uh, just flood that joke and don't womp cut it out. Womp. womp womp. I opened the door wide enough to squeeze my body through. It was dark, not entirely, but not entirely blacked out. It was akin to a bedroom with a nightlight. I had to wrap my dirty shirt around my face to be able to stand the smell. There were spotless metal tables lining the wall uh, room, along with shelves full of tools and empty cages. Along a huge empty wall was a table filled with computers and paperwork. I went there first to search for answers. Supply chain 4, status low, action required, fill, please press enter to initiate replacement sequence. Don't forget to press the sluice button. Gotta open up the chocolate sluice. (laughs) Those were the only words on the screen, with the enter blinking in bold blue letters. I could toggle out of the screen, nor cancel the status inquiry. So I did what I had to do and initiated the replacement. At this point, I kind of, I'm kind of like lost for things to say about this. Like I'm, I didn't like the beginning. I'm kind of invested now, mm. but I. I think that this hasn't done a very good job of world building. No. I think that it's Because we're still both kind of imagining Willy Wonka. And I feel... Yeah. And so I feel like they're kind of a... I I think that they have a concept here, and I feel like the story is leading to something interesting. Mm. Uh, Whether it's like a good payoff or not, I don't know, but it feels like it's going a place. Mm. But I feel like there are questions that I have that I shouldn't have, and I think it's just... Poor writing, period. Not like poor plot, poor description. Mm -hmm. Because this person is like describing very specific things like, but they get, they get in through the manhole, right? And then they're like, it's deserted inside. I think that that needs to be elaborated on. Mm -hmm. If they're saying like, the place was just empty. There were no guards. There was no chocolate workers there. There were no Oompa Loompas. Like, that needs to be <laughs> explained more. Because right. you would be like, what the fuck? This is highly guarded. Why are all the people? Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. And I think that they're kind of, like, downplaying that. Right. Like, if this was you, you would be shocked. Right. Is what I'm saying. What do you think? Do you have any... I mean, I agree. Yeah. That's, that's all I got right now, is I agree. Yeah. I, I kind of want to see where it goes. De- definitely leave a comment where you think this is going or, or how you feel about this, but yeah. Right. Um, the wall behind the computer illuminated is, uh, computers illuminated is blinding fluorescent w- uh, white light. As the turning of gears and machinery overtook the room, the first thing I noticed was the crane moving down an overhead track carrying a net full of blue and green striped spherical fruits. Like an apple? I don't... Spherical... I mean, I guess it could be it could. blueberries and grapes. Like, it's a, like there's... A, see what I mean? Like, just weird, poor writing. Right. Uh, there weren't anything... They weren't anything I had ever seen before. Okay. That's just me being dumb and not reading the next sentence. Yeah. 
As followed by the crane with my eyes, it led to an area that was sectioned off by fencing with a barbed wire with barbed wire across it. Bursting out of the fencing was Otto or something that resembled him. It was a lumpy blob of white skin covered in purple stretch marks with deep red cracks. This this is Willy Wonka. This has gotta be Willy Wonka. Totally. Cause he's tur- he's turning into a blueberry, isn't he? Yeah, he, he, it sounds pretty blueberry-ish. Uh, purple stretch marks and deep red cracks. He was some sort of mouth on top of flesh mound that was being kept in a gaping open position by some sort of forceps. At the crane, as the crane lowered itself into position just over the creature's mouth, it grunted repeatedly in approval over the meal that was about to be given, like a baby bird when its mother returns with a worm. That's good imagery. Yeah. Uh, the fencing began shaking violently, and a bunch of little men ran into the... So I feel like... Totally Willy Wonka. So I feel like they should... This is kind of like banking off of the idea of, like, it was Willy Wonka's chocolate factory all along, and it's like, but we knew. Right. <laughs> like, that's... I don't know how to feel about that. Uh... A bunch of little men ran into the room from the panels and the walls, stabbing the blob with some sort of electrical rubs. (laughs) It stopped moving. The crane released the net, and dozens of those strange-colored fruits fell into its mouth. The ones that fell were tossed up and into its mouth by some of the smaller men without electronic rods. A machine wheeled into the area, and a tube emerged from the front of it, facing the front of the fenced area. The men opened the side of the fence, and the machine extended the tube straight into a fold in the blob center. Let out a cry of pain as a brown sludge sloshed its way down the pipes to the machine. So this is this is like half Willy Wonka's chocolate factory. The other half of it is umbrella bioweapons. It's like tricell. That's not what I was picturing um oh man what's that limbo the the no you're thinking of inside inside that's that's the one uh inside the the video game which is made by the people who made limbo yeah it's it's uh, the company's called play dead mm-hmm. um but like the yeah. the blob from yeah that. yeah 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 spoilers spoilers but sorry it's an old game <laughs> it's a, it's an old sorry, game guys. and it's a short game um, uh, we just stopped at the pipe to the machine, right? Yeah. Otto, he loved chocolate so much, he was eager to take a job there. A voice pierced through the droning drone of machinery. Uh, I jumped and looked behind me. There was no one in the room. I ran for it, back through the door, up the ledge, uh, and into an elevator. I pressed a button on the ele- uh, uh, in the elevator... And it flew through the roof, and now I have an elevator that goes everywhere. End of the story. Uh, ran for it, back through the room, up the ledge, back through the manhole cover, and out to the sewers. I made my way back to the hotel faster than any taxi could have gotten me there. All right. I have no idea how to inform his mother of what's happened to her son. I don't really know what to do myself, honestly. Every morning there's a delicious chocolate bar sitting on my pillow. They know what I've done. They know where I am. They know I shouldn't be eating the... Oh, I know I shouldn't be eating the chocolate. I know it's a message. It's just, it's so good, though. Do you think they make his bed before they put the chocolate on there? Yeah, it's turndown service. He just has turndown service all the time. Well, he's in a hotel, though. He is an... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, like, yeah, how so does he know it's the chocolate factory? <laughs> it's a conspiracy. <laughs> it's like, who do you keep letting into my room to put chocolate on my bed? It's, it's the maid. If you don't want the, the chocolate, just, just tell us. Mm-hmm. We won't leave it for you. Normally, people who have a chocolate allergy tell us. Right. <laughs> we normally leave them hazelnuts. Credit to Mikey Knudsen. Um, okay, so this story, uh, click here to check out the Creepypasta's official YouTube channel. So I think that that's a link to his, the, the writer's YouTube channel. So, uh, this story, 
I think biggest problem is just the the actual writing of it. Right. Uh, the story could probably be is trying to fit in too much information too quickly. It like hyper focuses on to Otto. Right. When I think that there's a lot more to the story than just him. Mm. And I think the fun thing is going to the factory and like discovering all of the secrets of the factory and all of like the, the evil stuff that they're hiding. Right. But we only really get like one glimpse into it and it's that they're like force feeding people. Right. Into like monsters. Right. Which is pretty cool. Uh, just too quick, I think. I agree. Slow down. Foreplay with me a little bit. Any thoughts? Should we try these now? Yeah. I shouldn't. <laughs> but it tastes so good. But it tastes so good. Yeah, no, my thoughts on that is, um... Either make it more Willy Wonka's factory, or yeah, they make it a different factory. It should be... There shouldn't be any of this forced perspective thing of like, oh, it turns out that it's Willy Wonka's factory. Ooh. They should just come out and say that from the beginning. What's going on? Look at that. Oh, they got like a man. nice little handle to pull that out. Pull out kings. Oh. Oh. Look at that. Look at those. Look at those. Goldie boys. Hokkaido always doing fancy packaging. Hokkaido. Hokkaido. See if I can open this without mm. breaking it. That smells great. That smells mm. really good. Here's an up close of what it looks like. Got a nice little little snowflake on there. Hmm. Hmm. That's really this, good. This is better than these. That's um. It's really good. Yeah. Hmm. It's like milk chocolate, but it has like bitterness to it. That's a cacao nibs. Yeah, cacao. If you guys ever see these? I recommend trying them. Here's the box again for your viewing pleasure. I've got a golden wrapper. Hmm. 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 Hey. Hey now. Hey, lady. This. Hey. This isn't a. <laughs> this isn't this isn't a, a chocolate factory. This isn't a chocolate factory. Damn. Says there are five servings in there. What? <laughs> five servings, like a million calories each. No, each serving is one seventy calories, and it's five servings per container. 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 Pretty All good. right. What do you think will come of? That. Oh no. I don't like the look of it. This is not chocolate. You clicked on a thing about chocolate, but this isn't chocolate. Ah. Let's read the story. I can't think of a cold open or anything. We're gonna read a fucking story. Alright. <laughs> We're gonna read about Chocolate Girl. Alright. Her superpowers include melting in the sun. <laughs> melting in the sun. That sounds about right. The Louisiana summers are always so hot, even on the days like this when the sky was completely overcast with dark gray sky clouds. Henry was grateful the good old UPS, uh, USPS had issued shorts for the summer. Otherwise, it would make being a mailman that much worse. So that's what he's doing. He gets into this situation when uh, the chocolate being delivered to Chocolate Girl, and Chocolate Girl is powered by chocolate. Mm -hmm. When he, he delivers the chocolate, it it arrives so then melted. Is she like hotel soap. Yes. Okay. She it arrives and it is melted. Therefore, she gets angry and vi her chocolatey wrath is visited upon Henry the mailman. Okay. That's that's how the story's gonna go down. That's my theory. That's your hypothesis. That's my high chocolatesis. Mm. As he drove down his new route, he could feel the sweat that had soaked through his shirt and sh his shirt 
chill his lower back every time he hit a bump in the dirt road. It was a long way, long, long day, oh jeez. It was a long day, the distance between houses and the backwoods swampy area of his new route was almost half a mile or more a stretch. His beard was wet and blowing in the... Uh, and blowing in the small personal fan that dangled from the carrier truck ceiling. The air conditioning had gone out, and it was miserably hot. Okay. Um. Yeah. This is all just... So, one, we have third-person uh, narration. We're getting a God perspective narration. And this is a story of a girl. Who cried a river and drowned the whole world? Made of chocolate. Mm -hmm. uh, so, nothing, nothing too much to say here. I think that this so far has been well written. We're getting an idea of the situation. Mm -hmm. Taking a lot more time than the last story we read to mm -hmm. ground us. We know where we are. We have good context and setting so far, I think. Mm -hmm. um, Henry had always been a friendly man who, at times, seemed overqualified in the brains department for his job. Uh, he was never seen without something in his hands that he was reading. This is phrase odd. Yeah, it's kind of, like, clunky to read out loud. Yeah. Like, it's fine to read, but, like, trying to read it out loud, it feels like it's got a really clunky mouthfeel. Uh, in the morning, before all the mailmen started out from the post office, they would stand around discussing politics, social concerns, and life in general. He never joined in on the conversations willingly, but was always asked his opinion on what was being discussed. Henry's opinion was always held in the highest regard, as he was, uh, made, as he always made the most sound and thoughtful statements of anyone else working there. Ah, uh, is that is that anyone's experience at work? No. Of having thoughtful conversations about politics. No. I uh, don't think anyone of any p p political persuasion would have that experience. Nobody, to my knowledge, talks about politics at work. I mean... Uh, it's it was, one of those subjects you avoid like the plague with co-workers. Yeah. If you're a sensible person. Right. Now, as he drove past the tall grass and Spanish moss-covered trees... Henry did what he always did. Took out his thermos of homemade chocolate malt liquor and took a sip. Henry was no drunk and never had been, but he enjoyed his sipping liquor as much as the next. Something about the chocolate malt and the slight buzzing effect of the liquor that made him feel childish again. I, I like this. I like that we, the, again, tall grass, Spanish moss-covered trees. We're, get, we're getting a lot of the Louisiana feel, you know? And then the whole thing about him just just drinking every day. Mm. I enjoy that, too. He makes it himself, I guess. I guess. In his bathtub. In his bathtub, yes. How can you tell he's been making his chocolate malts in his bathtub? You can always tell, because he hasn't showered for a few days. Yeah. Uh, he, he smiled, his broad smile that he always seems to have on, whether he was with people or not. The next stop was an old manor that had originally belonged to cotton barons in the early 1800s. By this time, the plantation itself was all but gone, and the manor was in a state of major disrepair. As Henry pulled up, he remembered that he had a large box to deliver, so he was going to get out and walk to the front of the house. As he approached the manor, he realized that the disrepair was far worse than he had originally noticed. The home looked as though it ought to be condemned. Windows were cracked and shattered. Ivy had crept all the way up to the side of the house and even onto the roof. Paint was flaking off everywhere, and the wraparound porch looked completely warped and as disfigured as his grandfather's arthritic hands. Listen to my needy dogs. Yeah, they will not They're very shut the needy. fuck up. Especially the one that's whining right now. I'm pretty sure that's Scout. She's very needy. I apologize about my needy dogs. They're very needy. They just saw me, what, 15 minutes ago? Yeah, it was like right before reading. The time, the runtime of this in the last video. 
Yeah. Anyway. They're very needy. The garden was overgrown, and the iconic religious statues within the garden were crumbling and worn. The walkway was as long was long and made of old brittle bricks that had lost their mortar years ago. Henry noticed an old woman looking out of one of the particularly broken uh, broken upstairs windows. Um, her hair was completely white. In fact, Henry noticed everything about her seemed white. She, she yeah, she's a, she's a white lady. Very white. <laughs> It was really weird because she had very African features. Oh my god. <laughs> a pale as paper. Uh, I, again, like the description of everything here is, is nice. She turned and walked away from the window into the recesses of the manor with what appeared to be a great difficulty in movement. Henry decided, with the old woman having such a difficult time moving, he would actually set the package inside for her instead of leaving it on the porch as he might otherwise do. When the door opened, Henry was greeted by the old woman. She was even more old and haggard looking up close and in person than she had seemed to be at the window. Oh, uh, would you like to bring uh, this inside? Would you like me to bring this inside, ma'am? Yes, please, young man. Come in. Where would you like me to set it? Could you bring it into the kitchen for me, please? Where would you, where would you like this package, (laughs) ma'am? These are my walking breadsticks. (laughs) Henry followed the woman into her granite kitchen and set the box on a perfectly intact counter. The rest of the home he had seen, inside and out, was falling apart. Yet the kitchen appealed to, appealed, appeared to be immaculate. You have a really clean floor. You have a really clean, clean, kitchen, kitchen can't talk today. He looked over and saw the shaking woman's hands trying to cut open the box with a kitchen knife. She was unable to make any progress on it and set the knife on the countertop and began to rub her old sore hands. Let me get that for you. Thank you very much for helping out a poor old woman. It's my pleasure, ma'am, Henry said as he sliced open the box. Could you be so kind as to help me set up the things on the counter? I fear that some of them might be too heavy for my hands. I got these bad dragon dildos off of the bad dragon dildo auction site, and they are used, so I need to put them in the dishwasher. Oh, my God. Uh, Could you be so kind as the... Okay. Uh, No problem at all, Miss Henry said as he began to place the confectioner, confectioner sugar and cocoa onto the counter from the box. A baker, huh? Oh my God! It's it's uh, uh uh the the bakers from Resident Evil Seven. Oh no! Go tell Aunt Rody, Rody Baker. Yes. Uh oh yes, I'm making chocolate pudding for my children. My children. My children. I see. That might be difficult though. My knife. <laughs> I don't see any gelatin in here. Oh my. That's okay. You know, that stuff is mostly bone meal anyway. Henry said to the woman, whose hunched back was turned towards him now. She was leaning on the counter as though she were tired. Oh, yes, I know it is, she said calmly, just as effortlessly, and just as effortless, mm, just as she effortlessly whipped around and slashed across Henry's neck. Thankfully, you're here for that. Here you go, babies, the woman said as she lowered the large pan of chocolate pudding to the ground. She no longer looked or moved as an old woman. The meal she had been getting but the meal she had before getting the bones had rejuvenated and somehow given youth to her body. The short hairless creature came out of the bushes, dragging their long bony arms and spidery fingers. Their small mouths twitched, and their oversized black eyes looked greedily at the chocolate pudding. Mm. 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 And that sums up our feelings about... Mm. Uh, okay. It was really interesting up until she turned around and slashed his neck. Yeah, it, I think that a lot of stories do that, where it's just like a lead-up to the lady was a killer... And 
the 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 crux of this one is she had a a group of creatures that like gave her youth in exchange for chocolate. Made dead, out of dead, people. Yeah, people chocolate. People chocolate. People, 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 people. She clearly needs to set up a deal with Willy Wonka. Yeah. Hmm. 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 Chocolate. Chocolate? Chocolate. Did you say- CHOCOLATE! 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 CHOCOLATE!